Welcome to this week's episode of Humans in 5. Today, we'd like to circle back to a topic that we've danced around before. We've previously discussed the fact that as we age, the proportion of men and women in a given population can shift. There tend to be higher numbers of, for example, older women relative to the number of older men. Researchers have looked at this quite a bit, trying to tease out why men are experiencing higher mortality in their adult years, which leaves a plethora of women around as we get older. But this does raise a question about earlier on in our lives. Are there always more women around than men? Or is this proportion something that can change across our lives? The proportion of males and females within a population is called the human sex ratio. Here, we remind everyone that we're talking about biological or typical males and females, which is not the same as gender. We appreciate that these terms reduce a lot of variation and life experiences. You can learn more about the differences between sex and gender here. So if we know that there are more females relative to males in our golden years, what about the majority of our lives? Well, in general, there are two ways that we tend to calculate this human sex ratio. Researchers may use the population sex ratio, which is the total number of males for every 100 females in the population. This number is pretty easy to calculate from things like a national census. When looking at this particular ratio, we humans tend to have a pretty one-to-one -one ratio of males and females. Now, the population ratio looks at all people, but what about when we're born? Is there a one-to-one -one ratio of males to females when we're fresh out of the womb? It turns out this isn't quite the case. Another statistic called the sex ratio at birth indicates that we tend to have slightly more males relative to females at birth. About 105 to 107 males are born for every 100 females born. So overall, across our lifespans, we go from having slightly more males being born to roughly equal numbers across our lives to slightly more females surviving into later life. How does this happen? As we've said before, differential mortality between the sexes can contribute to this trend. Females tend to have greater resistance to disease, for example. So even if their lifestyles are similar to males, their odds of surviving to later life are a little higher. Additionally, we mustn't forget that men are often more likely to engage in risky behaviors, which also contribute to higher male mortality as we go through our lives. Now, these are, of course, general trends that have been investigated quite a bit in evolutionary biology. There's been a lot of investigation into whether, for example, environmental factors can contribute to the sex ratio at birth. These investigations are often triggered by observations of unusual sex ratios. For example, a curious trend over the last century or so indicates that humans as a species tend to have a higher sex ratio at birth with more males born into the population than females, particularly after periods of war. There was a male baby bump following the First and Second World Wars, for example. A few potential explanations have surfaced. Previous studies have noted that there might be a reduced viability of sperm that would contribute to females relative to sperm that would contribute to males among adult males who experience high stress levels as might have happened during times of war and strife. Other alternatives have been proposed and researchers continue to explore not just biological but social factors that can contribute to changes in the population sex ratio. For example, in some parts of the world there's a different value placed on sons and daughters which can also skew the amount of care a child may receive in a certain context with consequences for the population sex ratio. These social biases, where they exist, are often grounded in gender discrimination, and families tend to prefer male children. This has led to some cases where there is an enormous surplus of men with impacts on other social processes like marriage and having kids. Overall, we find these changes that follow us all from womb to tomb fascinating stuff. These patterns of births and deaths always leave us curious for more. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time on Humans in Five. And don't forget to subscribe.